This is Marilyn Burns. As I describe this lesson, I model the kind of recording on the board that I think is an important aspect of teaching, a way that connects students' thinking to appropriate mathematical representations. I began this lesson with the idea of estimates, and I started to list the multiples of 10. I read the numbers as I wrote them. 10, 20, 30. I asked the students to join in as I continue to write. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And then I wrote more than 100 at the end of the list. I asked who knows what an estimate is, and I took responses from several of the students. This was not new to them. But to support the vocabulary, I wrote estimate at the top of the list, and then I told them, I'm going to give you a problem, and I'd like you to think about which number on the list would be a good estimate for the answer. I wrote the problem on the board. There are seven tricycles. How many wheels are there altogether? Then I asked, which number on the board do you think is the closest estimate? Sergio suggested 20, and I put a check mark next to 20 on the list. Peter thought 40, and I checked that number too. Alicia thought 30, and Lydia thought 10. I checked those numbers. Those were all of the ideas that they had. I wrote problem on the board again to support the vocabulary and told them that we'd see which estimate is closest when we figured out the answer. I then wrote equation on the board and told them that before we work on figuring out the answer, I was interested in writing the problem as a math equation. After a bit of back and forth with several students, I wrote the equation and talked about what the numbers meant that there were seven tricycles and each had three wheels, so there were seven groups of three. I then used think, pair, share, and had the students talk with a partner to come up with ways to solve the problem. When I asked them to share their ideas, Amelia reported first. She suggested that I draw circles for the wheels and to do it seven times. I drew and then asked her, did I do what you were thinking? Yes, she said, but you can put a circle around each of the threes to show it better. I did this and Amelia nodded. Now what, I asked. Several students answered, count them. First we counted the circles by ones and then by threes and I recorded the multiples of three. Ruthie had a different way of figuring out the answer. She began, I know three times three is nine. I recorded not sure where Ruthie was going. Then she added, and that's three tricycles. I recorded and Ruth continued. She said three times three again is three more tricycles. And I recorded. And she continued, nine plus nine is 18. So that's six tricycles, but we need one more tricycle, so we have to add three more wheels. I recorded 18 plus 3 equals 21, and I said, so we figured out the answer of 21 another way. Lydia went next. You can add 3 seven times, she said. I recorded and asked, and how will you do the adding? Lydia explained. First she added pairs of threes. Then she added the first two sixes and then six plus the remaining three. I recorded. Now I have to add 12 plus nine, she said, but that's hard. Can you add 12 plus 10, I asked. It's 22, she answered quickly. Oh yeah, that helps, she said. 12 plus nine has to be 21. Under all of the recording, I wrote seven times three equals 21, and then I reviewed the methods that they had come up with. First we drew circles to represent the wheels on seven tricycles, I said, writing a one next to the first method. We also skip counted and got the same answer, I said, and wrote a two. I wrote a three. Then Ruthie had the idea of breaking the problem into parts, I said, and we got 21 again. I wrote a four, and finally we added seven threes. I circled the equation. Every way produced the same answer of 21. I summarized what we had done. There are four parts to what we did, I said, and I pointed to each section. We read the problem, we made estimates, then wrote an equation, and then did the figuring. Now you'll each do some work on your own, I told them. I erased the work specific to the tricycle problem and left the labels for the four parts. 
Now you'll complete a paper like this, I told them. I left this on the board as a model for them and also wrote multiplication on the top, again to support the vocabulary. I told them, since this is work about multiplication, let's use multiplication as a title. And I'll give you the equation this time instead of the problem, I told them. For 8 times 4, you have to make an estimate, write a problem, and do the figuring. And I added, before you get to work, I want to make one other change. I erased more than 100 at the end of the estimate numbers. And I replaced it using the greater than sign. This was a way to reinforce that symbolism for the children. I also told them that they should figure out the answer in at least two different ways, more if they'd like. Then the students got to work. And what happened is what typically happens. There's always confusion with things that are new. I circulated, observing, and helping. Some students need more help than others. Here are some of the results. It's always interesting to me to look at student work. I think that the best use of paper and pencil for students is to keep track of their thinking. And here there's lots to see about how Madison solved the problem. She used the context of dogs and legs. Referring to animals, animals was common among the girls. Thomas stuck with the assignment, but he worked slowly. He struggled. Also notice the reversals, the P in the title multiplication, the 3 and the 32 in the middle of the paper, and, and some others. Using cars or trucks for the story context was a common choice among the boys. Christian was always neat and organized, and he showed four different ways of figuring, labeling them counting, multiplying, adding, and figuring. He wrote at the bottom, all of the ways I figured out the problem, every answer was 32. My estimate was too off the answer. A note about how long lessons take. Here's my rule of thumb. Lessons are not necessarily meant for one day of math instruction. Learning doesn't happen in one period chunks. Children need time to absorb, revisit, and practice. The goal I keep in mind is not to cover the curriculum but to uncover the curriculum. Multiplication stories call for at least two days. That's the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening.